We are here continuing as Baguette Centaur, aka France, which is led by the dear Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, but we have much to be concerned about because we have some agitators our country, and the one of which we have to extremely be worried about is Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, because we really don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, that's right, we have the schizophrenic Louis Napoleon Bonaparte at the helm, and we are continuing along in our schizophrenic and, uh, Horrifying ways, we are a pariah on the world stage. Max Infamy, the Napoleon Bonaparte way. Unfortunately, it's Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, but currently having quite a bit of fun with this 1.3 expansion. And as a form of thank you, we are going to puppet Sweden. Um, so first up, we are going to uh, expel diplomats from them. Um, we will give the French words, which mean thank you for uh, this wonderful expansion, Ze suis un chat, and we will expel their diplomats. And then we will puppet them. <clears throat> now, of course, we are would like actually for either Russia or Prussia to join, because what we really want to do is we want to continue on getting the proper French borders, if you know what I mean, which involves us taking Prussian territory. We do not want to fight both Prussia and Russia at the same time, and we are hoping one of them joins in on this war, where we can humiliate them, as we've been doing to everyone, Last episode, we humiliated the United States and Great Britain, and we took most of the tea out of Great Britain's market, and we started unpurchasing the Louisiana Purchase. But this way, if one of them joins, either Prussia or Russia, we'll be able to humiliate, go for war reps, and then we'll be able to fight the other one, and nobody can join because we are kind of juggling all of these humiliations so that we don't have to sweat all this. Uh, if Spain joins, we'll just kneecap Spain um, and just continue on. So we will confirm here and get into them okay another thing that we're doing that i think is worth noting what we're talking about is we're 31 in this uni we're building this university to level 31 in particular throughput is really valuable in universities and so what will happen is we will go up on the throughput as we get a larger and larger level and the reason it's so valuable in universities because wages are a big part of the cost of university and throughput just increases the input goods and the overall outputs and this will cause us to overflow because our literacy is not super 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 high but whatever overflows over the cap we are all uh, what will happen to that is it will go into our technology spread and we'll get additional spread and we're thinking of after going mechanized workshop into labor movement we might start going ahead of time on some stuff um, and looking to make some moves uh, particularly keeping ahead of time on military tech might be something we're interested in because we're going full bad boy but we'll see how this play here develops because we're gonna have they're gonna be fearful they're fearful Fairly likely to back down all other things considered but we are interested in seeing who joins and how things can develop because this is obviously a very dynamic thing uh, let's see if anyone's a schizophrenic well okay they backed down so that's a development but now we have a new puppet um, <laughs> that works for us we will be trying to figure out who we're gonna go after next and then we'll be back with that so in addition to the developers of the game being from Sweden one of the reasons we went after Sweden is they're one of the biggest powers we were able to puppet and you can just kind of look through you know the power rankings in particular you can only puppet people who are minor powers or below and Sweden was was one of the bigger ones and they had a lot of resources. Two Sicilies is another quite large one and so I guess we'll just go after Two Sicilies. We could also go after Mexico which would be a decent shout um, but I think we'll just pop in Two Sicilies here with kind of like the same logic where you know if uh, either Russia or Prussia sides with them we are pretty cool with that. Actually let's see maybe only Russia has an interest here with Mexico. We are going to actually need to declare an interest. So let's declare some interests around the world. And then we, let's, we probably want Brazil, Grishin, some of this. And we'll do this. And then we'll go after Mexico because I think Russia will have an interest in here. And so maybe we can goad Russia into going in. Prussia starts a diplomatic play against us. Perfect. So now here, they might be able to get um, Russia against us. We're going to put in on our war goal. We're going to try and fix our borders. We're going to go after Rhineland and Northern Rhine. So we are going to return state Rhineland and Northern Rhine. They are ours by right. And then we're going to be mobilizing troops and seeing if the Russians will join um, this play. So we'll be back with that. 
So it looks like we get a join by Russia here, um, which is going, it's not exactly what we wanted, but we can still, we can still, we should still be able to fight this. We're going to need to mobilize all the conscripts. We're making a little bit of money. We can afford to be losing money. This is fine. And as far as the war goals go, or let's take a look at this little sway here, we notice they normally the uk and the us would be able to join in on this play but now they cannot because they are humiliated now the east india company might join and that would be a bit of a tough squeeze uh, especially if austria leaves but as long as this doesn't happen this war will be relatively easy so we'll put in we're gonna let this go kind of towards the end and then we'll put in some more war goals and then we'll be back with a happy good time war against both prussia and russia Alrighty, so right off into the war, we get off our first landing. We have a second landing coming in, but it looks like we hit no navy, no army. And so we will be getting a good push in on Russia. Now, as far as the war goals go, what we put in is we put Humiliate on Russia so they can't join plays against us. And we also put in Conquer Pomeranian and West Prussia instead of Humiliating Prussia. The idea behind this is that when we take both of these states here, they will lose access to the sea unless they have someone in their market. Okay, so they'll still have access to the sea through Mecklenburg, but they won't have any convoys. Um, they'll lose a little bit of access here. Maybe they can have a little convoys here, but I thought that this would be, do a good job of kind of kneecapping the power of the Prussian market, especially because we can go after Hanover as we need to, or as we'd like to, um, I think. Um, maybe we can't with the truce, but we'll see how this shakes out. But overall, this war is already looking really good for us. We're in on the Russian capital. We're doing pretty well on all fronts, except for this one. But that's not our front. That's not our problem. And so we'll be getting in and trying to enforce here. So we get mechanized workshops here, which is actually one of the best techs in the game. It's giving us plus 10 economy of scale building level cap, which is going to be big nice. And also unlocks a whole bunch of PMs for both the tooling workshops, or sorry, not the tooling workshops, the sewing machines for textile mills and furniture manufacturing. They use tools, which we have quite a lot of tools. So we're going to come in and swap up the PMs. Also notably, we've started to enact colonial exploitation. Hopefully we can get this through, but we'll just take a quick look at our PMs and try and swap them up a little bit nicer um, because we have so many tools these will be really efficient um, some of the best pms in the game this is one of the best labor saving pms of course tools are expensive and we have a lot of labor but we're going to swap up onto it anyways and this will be big nice we're also going to do smooth bores because we do have quite a big demand for cannon as far as the war it's coming along quite nicely we are taking a guy off of this front to land behind on prussia so hopefully prussia will be a little bit easy to enforce if we get a quick landing into a push into brandenburg Pushing through these mountains is going to be slow. Pushing through here is going to be slow. So we're going to need to do a landing, but we're just doing a single landing. Hopefully it's good enough. If not, we'll just do a double landing afterwards. We got a landing, baby. Here comes the push. Let's see it. Ba-bam. And we are going to be able to tick them below zero now, which is going to be huge. And we're also just going to split them open like a freaking coconut. Uh, I think we'll apply this guy over here. And we, uh, we also finish up our little native uprising that we have going on. But we're just going to pile in on here. And the car is going to be super loud outside. But we don't care. Because we're going to enforce on Prussia pretty quick here. And then it's going to be in on Russia. And then no one can really stop us. Because we have Great Britain humiliated. Russia humiliated. United States humiliated. They're all humiliated at our hands. And we will, you know, kind of be able to do whatever we want. Which, you know, is going to be the memes. The ends justify the memes. We're going to finish taking all this land i think particularly we would like to puppet the netherlands but we won't be able to too easily because they're a major power how major powery are they though is the big question because if they're kind of close um let's see if they decay below they have a lot to decay so we're not going to be able to puppet them straight away but we are going to be taking this land in luxembourg if we can and we do have, we pop and enact migration control revolution. These revolutionary movements in 1.3 have been uh, a lot more interesting. We will see that they are going to, you know, proceed up with the checkpoint. We have a ton of troops up here, so we could probably take on this revolution. And so I don't think we need to worry about it. But they are not happy about uh, the colonial exploitation. It could happen anywhere. Uh... It resides in the heart of our nation. Ugh, yuck. I think we have way fewer pops uh, in Langdok than we do kind of the capitals. So we'll just try and get that through. 
but it, this has felt much passing laws has felt much more interesting it's also a bit slower and so um again you know ooh, let's see media endorsements this event is because of our Gisebert uh, von i can't pronounce who's advocating it for it so our agitators have been helping us out in some of these and so we can get enactment time or we can get the intelligentsia group to like us more and get a little bit more pop attraction now they're not that powerful um, but we would love for them to like us more um, please like us. Uh, the Petit Bourgeoisie is coming up on a little bit. They don't really have that much clout. I don't, I'm not sure how much clout we're going to be able to get on, in on them anyways. We would love the Industrialists to get powerful, though, because then we would be getting this doubled bonus, which is pretty big. So maybe we should be bolstering them instead of the Petit Bourgeoisie. But I digress. I think we will just go for, um, yeah, I think, well, this is just for five years. Uh, we'll go with that. Um, it'll be a little bit, uh, extra. We don't really have a huge opposition to colonial exploitation, so we'll just continue on like this. And the war, we're just wrecking them, just pushing right through. Um, they're about ready to capitulate, which will leave us kind of with just a Russia to contend with. Um, let's actually even see what's going on. Yeah, Russia is not a fan of this, but the mob approaches... Let's see, we can get more radicals uh, and change progress of civil war. This is also another, there's a ton of these events where you can change the progress of the civil war and it definitely feels a little bit more dynamic. Um, I think we're just gonna go uh, for the loyalists and the little slow disbursement. I don't think we're too concerned about this civil war um, and the loyalists will be kind of nice and we're about to enforce here, it looks like, um, you know, and we enforce on them there in Prussia and now they will have market access still but only as long as they have Mecklenburg, which we can deny to them eventually. And then we're going to continue on here, trying to enforce against Russia. Actually, let's take a look at this hopeless people event. Facing the dearth of popular support for his ideas, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte has departed France, going into exile beyond our borders. No! The prince himself has been exiled. Let's see who's the ruler of our country. Oh, it's still Lepo Lu Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. I guess he has e exiled his nonsense of being both an agitator. He has exiled his other self. Uh, his nonsense of being both an agitator and also a leader. Um, so Louis Napoleon will be exiled? Or we can do... Uh, he gets alcoholic. Well, we don't want him to get alcoholic. We don't want him to get negative character health. So someday, perhaps, this will things will change for the better. Bye-bye. We'll see you later. <laughs> Absolutely unhinged that he is both agitating against and also, you know, leading the country. Of course, he's exiled into the throne, as it were. The emperor. Everyone knows you exile the emperor. To Elba, actually. So... The truth hurts, yeah. This is the greatest peace deal in the history of peace deals. We're getting Russia to be humiliated. So we'll just put that in there, and then we'll take a look at Campaign of Banquets uh, event, which is a uh, part of our dear agitator, where we can get enactment time, uh, or we can get universal pop strength, and we can get him Grifter. I think he already has Grifter, does he not? I believe he's already a little bit grifty. You know what I mean? Sometimes you get swifty, sometimes you get grifty, and considering he's already grifty, vast sums of money flowing into politics, you say? And so that'll help out. Vultures upon a Carth carcass? I almost said Carthage. The truth really does hurt. Uh, I think we will... We don't want to take that bureaucracy. Well, we can afford the bureaucracy hit. And we would like to get the intelligentsia a little bit more oriented towards being happy with us. But now we have Russia completely uh, humiliated. And now nobody can oppose us uh, who is of any concern or any real concern. And so we can try and go after Luxembourg. I think maybe... Uh, yeah, we can return state Luxembourg on them, and we think Russia might side with the enemy. This must be bugged because they're humiliated, so they shouldn't be able to. But we will return state Luxembourg here, and we will just put a few guys on front. And, you know, uh, put in a couple other war goals against uh, the Netherlands that we think are good. Probably transferring the Dutch East Indies, uh, but then we'll be back with the war or progress or, you know, what have you. So we just finished our research here and we are at a weird inflection point where we would kind of want to go human rights so we can go multiculturalism, except for 
Radicals no longer support multiculturalism. Instead, it's the humanist ideology. And if we come in here, uh, you know, looking to invite an agitator who can maybe go humanisty with us, we don't see anyone with the humanist ideology that we can invite. And so this leaves us a uh, kind of a weird situation where I'm not sure exactly how we force or make it so that we can go humanist. You know, there's not something in here that like sounds humanisty. Um, and so this is gonna be maybe interesting. Maybe it's even harder to go multiculturalism here in patch 1.2. I was thinking it was gonna be easier, but it depends on how easy it is to invite, you know, or sorry, in patch 1.3, so used to saying patch 1.2. It depends how easy it is to invite an agitator that's of the particular group you like. And um, we just can't do it. And so hopefully we can try and figure something else out. But as far as tech goes, we're going to go something else. And instead, we are going to look to pr uh, push some of the production tech. In particular, uh, we're going to go for nitroglycerin. Um, and then we will let these two spread to us and then go ahead of time for shift work. I think I like this idea. Uh, that way it increases the max throughput bonus. We can also go steam donkey into pump jacks, something like this. Uh, but this will be our plan for now. Nitroglycerin into more production technology, which sounds good. And we pass colonial exploitation here, which is pretty nice, but we do have this revolution breathing down our neck a little bit, and the revolutions seem to be a lot more pernicious here in 1.3. Um, still haven't had one fire yet. I think we're willing to fight this rev overall, uh, and so while we had decreased taxes at one point, we kind of re-increased them back up, and now we're looking to add a whole bunch of construction. The colonial exploitation will also be quite nice, and let's take a look at what laws we can maybe try and pass. I think we're probably going to go for free trade. Um, we would also want to go, not secret police, but guaranteed liberties, um, but we currently don't have any sort of movement for this, uh, nor anyone agitating for it, and so we could also go, you know, private health insurance, um, but I think we'll do that once we piss off the industrialists a little bit, and I think we'll just go free trade right now, and uh, look to finish up. Also, this war is about to be over, so let's just let it tick, and we enforce on them. We got, we grabbed all of their colonies is what we went for, we left, uh, the Netherlands proper and we also you know cleaned up this border here um, so now we should have you know all of this uh, area of France we just have to incorporate it in order to get the natural borders of France and I think towards the end of uh, you know kind of cleaning everything up uh, why don't we go after Mascara and look to integrate these guys as well now why can't we integrate you Ah, because we still have these diplomatic plays going. And so we'll keep on trying to, you know, stop this revolution. Hopefully it ticks down because we've already passed the law. But maybe it's a little bit sticky. Um, I think that they don't... Uh, they're pretty mad at us. Um, as well as also... Uh, let's exit reform government. The trade unions who we're bolstering, we're trying to get them on up. I think they will stop being mad at us, um, but we'll see how things sh uh, shake out. Um, the trade unions is a really good group. Uh, we would love to kind of get them in. Um, they are not completely inconsistent with the petite bourgeoisie, so maybe we can get something going in that regards. Um, but we will just continue on trying to clean up um, Al Upper Algeria, or maybe we'll just take all of Morocco. One of the two. We'll try and think about it. Maybe made a little bit of a mistake here. We took an event that would change our petite bourgeoisie into a radical, and now they're big mad at us because they're a radical. And it also made it so we had to reform the government, so we're no longer armed forces and industrialists and these petite bourgeoisie, but we had to switch to kind of going intelligentsio, which overall we're okay with, but maybe this trajectory is not going to work out so well for us, um, in particular, like with the kind of like law passes we're trying to do, specifically right now. Uh, we we now have no enactment chance on free trade, so we're going to need to come on off of it, um, and we won't be able to pass it for another 730 days. Uh, fortunately though, fortunately for us, it's not a hyper big deal, uh, because a lot of people don't want to trade with us anyways, but now that we have an intelligentsia in government, we can try and go stuff like rights of assembly, and also into guaranteed liberties, which I think is going to be a pretty big deal. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. Um, the intelligentsia, we're not going to go off of monarchy and autocracy. We can notably do tech, tech, we can do technocracy. This is interesting. I think technocracy is really good. Let's see if this will rev us. So, these guys will be big mad at us. They will radicalize the armed forces. It won't radicalize a couple of the groups. Uh, but we, if we go rights of assembly, we won't be able to go technocracy afterwards. I think we're going to make a play on technocracy. So, maybe this works out. 
we'll see what maybe geez i don't know exactly how this is going to look but we'll see how things shake out um you know kind of as we proceed forward on all of this uh, but it's going to be a little bit of a wild ride, considering how the revolutions feel a lot more dynamic here in 1.3. Um, and so uh, we'll see if this just wrecks us or whatever, or what have you. So, so far, the interest groups are really, really mad at us outside of government. But it looks like maybe it's the case that you can't have two revolutionary movements at once. And the revolutionary movement we're dealing with is this migration control revolutionary movement. Uh, not this opposed the technocracy revolutionary movement, which would instantly appear... Uh, if this movement didn't exist and so this is a bit interesting but we also get this event the petition march a group of petitioners representing the intelligentsia led by daniel Le uh, leconte uh who uh let's see if he is either the ig leader or an agitator he's the ig leader and he, or no, and he's not an agitator. So he's the IG leader, um, is doing this thing where we can dispatch uh, something to deal with it. It will change civil war progression. But this intelligentsia, we actually really like because they are helping us to push through technocracy. So we shall embark on the fast train to Paris and we'll get interest group approval, political strength, popularity, and all this. And this is looking really, really big nice for us. We will also come on and uh, we're gonna get rid of a couple of consumption taxes or just one. We're gonna get rid of this one on tobacco and then we're gonna raise this temporarily and then we're gonna bolster the intelligentsia because we wanna try and get them caked up so they can get this law passed. And this will hopefully, 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 um, allow us to usher in, you know, this new French era where we have fixed the borders and we are for a technocratic, a technocratic Napoleon future. Um, of course, he will have quite a lot of power, but it will be a technocratic monarchy. <laughs> Very excited for this one. So it looks like I spoke too soon, uh, and the preservatocracy or uh, revolutionary movement has superseded the other revolutionary movement. Um, it looks like there's still a movement to enact migration controls, but it's no longer revolutionary, uh, mainly per or perhaps possibly because the rural folk actually support this technocracy's change and i don't think we can fight this rev now if we wanted to do low infamy there's actually an exploit we could use here um where we would uh let this war or let this uh civil war kind of go and then we would join the other side and it would reset all of our infamy to zero which is a bit of a like exploit don't really want to do it kind of want to keep this the high infamy run because this is what the people wanted um in the voting uh but this is an interesting inflection point where we could because this uh you know revolution is so completely large uh we could use this opportunity to reset our infamy and just get to play big giga chad sun never sets on the french empire and also be low infamy which is kind of an interesting one but i think what we'll do is we'll just come off of this technocracy um i don't think we want to generate all these radicals we can't attempt it for some time um, but this is okay. Maybe we want to try and pass it later. I think we're just going to instead come in and maybe do rights of assembly. If this... Now, this is going to radicalize too many people. Uh, can we do total separation? Yeah, so this might be the proper one uh, for us to do here. Where we can kind of get... Uh, you know, we can get the intelligentsia happy with us. We are trying to bolster them above uh, 20 uh, or above... To a high enough percentage and get migration attraction. Um... Uh, boosted uh, once they get above 20%. Um, but this will be the plan for now. Uh, notably, the trade unionists are also, uh, they've become powerful enough that they we can get stuff from them, so this is nice. Of course, we lose the bonuses, and we're expecting that colonial movement to also go away at this point in time. Now, what are you doing here? You're going after Morocco, but that's our territory. Subjugate Morocco? Hmm, I'm pretty sure we can't dow them and then help them out. And so, I guess we'll have to take that dirt from um, them the old ways. But we will look to continue on with our natural borders of France. And just look to pick up these guys um, kind of uh, as we go along. And that way we have a nice looking, you know, France uh, across here. Of course, we're not going to have it with Morocco, given what the UK is doing. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to see what uh, this flavor has in store for us for the natural borders of France once we get it, once we finish incorporating all this territory. So the rural folk revolution is back and it's actually flopping from here to from north to south repeatedly 
changing which states it's going to rev, which is a little bit interesting, and it's just flopping back and forth, and now it's gone? But the sirens are here. Surely this is the best timeline. A little bit interesting. It seems a little bit buggy uh, in regards to which ones are going to rev. But the landowners, they got some demands. Um, this is another feature I like, which uh, the landowners are on the precipice of revolt. You don't say. Are they really? They don't look on the precipice, but let's see what they want. Um, uh, and are threatening to join the revolution if the demands are not met. Uh, what would they like? Uh, we can give them interest group political strength and approval. Uh, make them insurrectionary. And get mass arrests. Well, a little tempted to mass arrest them and let the other groups be powerful. If we want to try for our technocratic future, we could do this. And so I guess we'll say they'll be dignified in handcuffs. Um, I think we could fight just the landowners and the rural folk uh, fairly easily. And... Um, yeah, they can be dignified in handcuffs. That's an interesting event, though, because that gives us, like, quite a bit of, you know, like, power to do things. And so maybe we're headed for a technocratic future of the House Bonaparte. So now let's see. Will they be supported here? No, it's just the rural folk and the trade unions uh, to enact landed voting. Of course, the landowners aren't going to su uh, support that. But that's a bit interesting. Looks like maybe the landowners are not going to kind of do anything. But I think maybe we want to be suppressing the rural folk, given what they are kind of doing here. And so instead of bolstering the trade unionist, who is insurrectionary anyways, we're going to come on over here and we're going to increase taxes a little bit. So we're over 200, just the little trick. And we will suppress them. And then we will decrease this back down and everything will be perfectly uh, balanced. And hopefully we can kind of get something done here in regards to what's going on. And then we'll also, our truce is up with Great Britain. And so we'll look to take the rest of the tea off of them after this. Or maybe that'll be next episode. We'll see how things shake out. So get a little bit of good luck here as we're trying to clean up Mascara to kind of fix the borders. In that Morocco joined in against us which means we can just put in like a bunch of war goals on morocco here and we specifically put in return everything and conquer al rif so it looks like we'll be getting all of this with a nice clean north africa border for us um, to kind of round things out after cleaning up this border we're still waiting on the integrations to hit the event for the national borders of france but we have taken all the land we need to take we've taken wallonia flanders rhineland and north rhine we've taken all of it and so this will put us in pretty good shape for all this. So this rural folk revolution, despite kind of trying to pick some good events to make it kind of go a little bit slower, is looking pretty imminent. We have done quite a bit to also uh, recruit up in the capital, which we know will be on our side, and we will continue doing that. I think we'll recruit up to 65 battalions. And in theory, what we would want to do is actually, let's make that theory practice. Uh, what we can do to kind of also kneecap them further is uh, specifically look at the province that are going to rev like Brittany for example and we can swap down their PMs uh, to poor PMs and so that they will have quite a bit of trouble you know fighting us um, and we're just going to take a quick look around just places that have 10 barracks we're going to swap them down a bit uh, to kind of not having very good PMs which will make this war a little bit easier Ugh, that's a lot of barracks and so this should make it so that we can kind of clean this out um, get rid of like a whole bunch bunch of radicals we have a lot of rural folk radicals and we will be able to purge them once we do this uh revolution and so i'm thinking we just like let it happen if we take a look here we can see that almost all our radicals are from or not all but like we have a huge chunk of rural folk radicals and so this will kind of help with that um we should be finishing up this war and then probably taking on this rev and then calling it a day for this episode i imagine is kind of what things are going to look like um but we are about to pop this rev so we'll just keep on going here. Here, let's see what we can do. We'll take an Ackman time and we'll take the setback and make this happen a little bit faster because we're already on adoption for total separation here. Uh, but this revolution's about to pop off. Uh, oh, we're going to get negative progress at the next checkpoint. Maybe we have, uh, you know, sort of managed to quell off this. That's very interesting. Maybe it has something to do with us turning down the PMs. Oh, ah, that's interesting. So we can uh, change the progress positively by getting landowner negative landowner political strength, or we can get this and this, and they become more loyalist. I think we'll just give it an extra 10%, like, 
I mean, we don't care. We actually kind of would actively want this revolution to happen. Was really expecting to see it pop off, and then just in the at the last minute, they just kind of peters out. I guess. Well, okay. So I guess we're not gonna have a rev. Almost certainly. That's a little bit interesting. But okay. So we're annexing all of Morocco here through the peace deal, and it's now part of France, and we get a nice northern border. I think that perhaps the reason that this uh, landed voting rebellion is down ticking is maybe because the industrialists join. Um, after they're joining, now it looks a little caked up, and now it looks a little bit spooky. I'm not sure we want to fight this anymore. We did actually add in an event that kind of provoked them a little further. So if we get another event, kind of in the near-ish future, um, this will actually be a little bit spooky. We'll reset the PMs here, and we'll take another tick off of this revolution and see what happens. Um, and then we'll kind of pick out a law thing. Austria's embargoing us. Tell us what's new. South Africa doesn't want to be a puppet anymore. Also... Yeah, looks like, and we get our event here, and so we could get civil war progress uh, with Lu with Napoleon dying. Interesting. Uh, and France gets a legacy of regicide, or oh, I guess I guess Mr. Bonaparte's dying either way. Whilst Louis Napoleon uh, Bonaparte was riding in a carriage between Paris and uh, one of his country estates, a revolutionary threw himself under the carriage with a live grenade. Yikes. Slaying both the emperor and himself. So we can scatter the murderer's ashes in the river and mourn our beloved emperor. The emperor will die. The civil war will loot progress. France gets a legacy of regicide for two years. And we get a bunch of loyalists. Or... Charles Bonaparte will have vengeance upon his father's murderers. We will also get kind of all the same thing, but an additional 50% chance that he will change to either traditionalist or authoritarian, and he will get wrathful. Now, I don't think wrathful is too terribly... Well... It's not... Mm, I think we'll just scatter his murderer's ashes, but that is... We can say au revoir to Mr. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. And we will get Charles Bonaparte, who is an industrialist. That's actually pretty nice. Um, so we'll need to find a way to make the government legitimate. Uh, looks like that can't be done. Because the industrialists are insurrectionary. So we'll try and find a way to appease them and get them in government. But we do have a Napoleon on the throne. And now let's take a look at if this is going to continue to rev. Uh, progress. Pause. Now we're on positive progress will be added each tick. Uh, you know, courtesy of switching off. So, I think what we'll do... Oh, we can't pass a law. Let's... What's our most legitimate? This is our most legitimate? Alright, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. What is... So, if we lower taxes two notches... We'll be hemorrhaging money, but... Oh, we still won't be legitimate enough to do anything. And we couldn't put anyone in government because everyone's revolutionary. Charles Bonaparte, things aren't looking too good for you. Now, of course, we could also uh, juice the other side. Man, I wish these guys weren't insurrectionary, because then we could do this and everything would be happy. But um, well, what do these guys want? They want landed voting, but even the industrialists want landed voting? Ah, oh, come on. We just got the... We got, we got some bad events and some, some things going on, but this revolutionary system is a lot more interesting and dynamic. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to do here. I d well, I don't think it's run uh, tax deficit that large or a deficit that large. Maybe we come on to something like this. I don't think we want to start a war right now. Uh, yeah, this is going to be too much of a... The, the taxes is too much of a lagging effect. We've already generated like a lot of radicals. Like The taxes long-term are going to be good for... Avoiding generating radicals. This is also getting minus 10 interest. Okay, so we gotta just get nuke everything. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get... I, I know why they're insurrectionary now. It's because we're spending way too much uh, authority. So let's come off of a whole bunch of this. Stop bolstering and also get rid of a few of these. Because our dear friend uh, Charles cannot keep up... Does not have the same stamina as his father. Um, and so now... Yeah, so we saw all these come down because they were getting a huge malice from us being overflowed on authority. Uh, and so now, maybe, and we also have the legacy of regicide to contend with. Yikes. Um, but now maybe this will be ticking down. Uh, progress? No, it's not. 
Alright, so we'll try and avoid the rev, because this is a little bit too big, I think. I don't think we can stomach this rev. We could have stomached a smaller rev, but not including the industrialists. Yeah, it's a big, all these radicals together. Man, oh man. Man, oh man, is this, this is uncomfortable. This is uh, very tense for me, and it's getting another 11 progress, but these guys aren't like upset. But the problem is, is the real problem is, is we would love to pass some laws that they would like. We actually can't even try and pass uh, landed voting if we wanted to. I think, I mean, I think we want technocracy, but uh, we can't try and get this guy in government to make him not insurrectionary. Oh man. All right, let's see, can we maybe invite an agitator to try and help us out or something? So this guy will want to enact landed voting. That's not exactly what we want. You're dead, my friend. What are you doing here? You died. You're dead. What are you doing here? <laughs> He's dead. You're dead, my friend. What are you? This is your son. Did you not die in that carriage accident? Wild, what a time to be alive. Or, I guess, really, truly, what a time to be alive with Na Lo Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, very awkward, very, very awkward. We're gonna see if we can prevent this rev. Uh, I don't think we're gonna start another war, but we're just gonna be moving and shaking through some of these events, uh, trying to make some moves and some shakes. All right, so we got an event that allowed us to boost the uh, approval rating of the industrialists which took them out from being insurrectionary so now we can make a legitimate government and so we'll do this uh is this the most legitimate government we can make it looks pretty legitimate and so now we can pass laws uh notably we can come on to technocracy if we want and this will make everyone big happy and then we can usher in a new future now who does it make sad who does it make big mad? it makes the landowners and the armed forces mad but i think it will get all of these people who who are trying to rev for landed voting i think it gets all of them off our back let's see rural folk trade unions petite bourgeoisie and then we can come in and rural folk uh will come up they will endorse this change plus five and so will the trade union so maybe we can sneak in a little technocracy here we can usher in the new future now we will see if people drop out of this rev um, if not, we maybe have to go landed voting as much as we hate it with our super autocracy. Um, oh, they're getting minus 10% per checkpoint. So I think, I think that, oh, or is this a new rev situation? Or it's readjusting the rev? The game's trying to think. Is it readjusting the rev borders because the trade unions are no longer with it? We're going to take another little tick here and see what happens. Okay, so we get some events coming in. We get uh, several events. We, we get another assassination attempt on the Emperor. Uh, Charles Bonaparte gets scarred, or is he scurred? Uh, this is going to eat into some of the legitimacy, but it's also going to bring down the revolution. We're going to get stirring radicalism. Man, some of these events have been really uh, unpopular or uncomfortable. Um, yeah, okay, it can happen anywhere we're gonna do, and hopefully this can, we can bring this on down. They are, the overall the interest groups aren't super mad at us anymore. Well, the rural folk are, but the trade unions aren't. And so, can we bring the trade unions into government? No, we can't. Mm. Right, they're incompatible with the industrialists. But we do have industrialists and intelligentsia, both powerful at the same time, and happy with us, which is giving us some really, really good bonuses that we are fans of. And, uh, man, this is tough. This is a little bit tense. We will see how we manage to make out here. So it was uneventful, and by uneventful, I mean there were a decent size number of events, but we did manage to finally get rid of, you know, our revolution. Now, we might get a new one with preserving autocracy. This is, uh, you know, a test for the future, uh, but we have secured the borders of France and, uh, you know, southern France here in North Africa, and we are on the very verge of getting the cement the house of Bonaparte as well. So let's take a tick and see what this event's going to hold for us, because we are are going to be coming on it real real soon we get 100 percent progress and we get the eternal house of bonaparte not only do we get our dear friend charles uh bonaparte we of course do have the extra eternal house bonaparte because charles's daddy's not even really dead he's not i know you i know you might think he's dead but uh 
You know, he's still out kicking about. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte is still alive, uh, even after he was assassinated, which is absolutely incredible. So we get the Eternal House of Bonaparte, and we will see what this has to say. The Bonaparte dynasty has tightened its grip on the French crown to the point that no other claimants pose a serious challenge to the monarch's credentials any longer. Charles Bonaparte is without peer. We get some legitimacy and popularity for five years. No other dynasty will do it. And then, or we could go uh, armed forces kind of stalwart to the revolution. I think we'll take the legitimacy and the popularity. Thank you very much. That will give us some extra authority. That's going to help us out with the budget. You know what I'm saying? The b -b -b budget. And we will also take a look at our legitimacy. We're somewhat legitimate. We're trying to form a, techn a technocratic union, a technocratic future. And uh, to that end, we would like to get some, you know, we can weaken the opposition. Let's take a look at Oliver Malay. Yeah, we'll weaken him. We'll let it know. And we will continue on passing this. And we finish against crew. And we also get a nice revolution brewing uh, here uh, with these guys. So they're going to get a decent amount of progress. Maybe we can't actually do the technocracy. But that we're going to figure out this ep uh, next episode. What we did this episode is we secured the borders. We, cement we cemented the Napoleon's dynasty. Although daddy died. But then again, you know, other than dying, he also, you know didn't uh so there's all that and we have charles in charge he's an industrialist a market liberal we kind of a big fan of this guy and maybe we can fight this one um a little bit annoying with the timing we kind of want to do a big war and this is kind of brewing up pretty quick and so maybe we want to try and see if we can pass any laws that in particular the armed forces like or the landowners like in order to try and get them going but again this is for next time. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And other than that, other than that, uh, maybe take a walk if you've been sitting an extended period of time. It's good for your health and uh, this sort of thing. And also, you know, get the blood flow going. You'll feel better and have a good day.